I've been a horseman my entire life, but what makes me different than the typical horse man is I've lived with multiple sclerosis since I was 15 years old. So the time came when I had to get out of the saddle and I turned to driving and I discovered the United States Driving for the Disabled. And shortly after that, the founder of Driving for the Disabled retired and she asked me to assume the presidency. And when I retired, I returned to California where I was born and I wanted to start a regional program, a model of services to people with disabilities using our horses as a bridge to nature. We use wheelchair accessible horse-drawn carriages and we have created a program that is completely volunteer driven. We don't have a single paid employee and we don't charge for the services that we provide and this year we have over 150 events. Participants are able to achieve the freedom that only a horse can provide and many of them are not able to get on a horse for therapeutic riding. They can get on with their wheelchair into a carriage and this also allows them to take their caregiver or a loved one so it builds the family ties. A lot of times when you live with challenges it's you, you can be consumed and brought down by the struggles that you live with as, and it's important to focus on what you can do, not on what you cannot do. No matter what challenges we live with, we have the capacity to live and to love fully. And our love for horses is our connection and our bridge that compensates for our lost function. I was at an art show for one of my students, Mario, who years ago suffered a traumatic brain injury in an automobile accident. He was in a coma for quite a long time, and when he came out of that coma, his future looked very bleak. He was basically going to be consigned to a care home, you know, to live out his days, which weren't expected to be very long. But he has a very devoted mother, and she brought him to me as a potential student for, for driving. And after two years of coming out there and taking lessons as a participant, he's now a volunteer. So he goes and he gets fulfillment out of giving rides to um, seniors at a veterans home in Yonkville. I hold one line, I hold Mario's hand, he holds the other line, and there's this unbroken circle to these horses that carry us around. And we're having a magical day, and Mario is having his own form of healing, but he says, I'm sharing my love with the world. I'm healing the world. And he feels like he's giving something back to all the people who've helped him. We've started something new in Access Adventure based on our work with the older veterans of the Veterans Home at Yachtville which is an outreach, a special outreach to the younger veterans. So many are coming home from Iraq and Afghanistan with traumatic brain injuries or the horrific effects of the roadside bombs. Uh, and there are a lot of young veterans that are struggling to adapt to a new way of life. And we realize that we have a mission that we call Welcome Home, support for veterans and their families. That we can use our experience with Access Adventure to show them that their lives are not over, their lives will be different now, but we can show them a good time. We can show them a way to experience life in all of its glory with our connection with the horses that bridge back to nature and an effective form of therapy. With our big wagons and our big horses, we can include the family, we can include the therapist, and we can make a start on the road to recovery for people that are, are struggling. 
We offer a lot of services and we don't charge for what we do. So it, it can be difficult, but people see what we do and there's an element of, of support out there for us. We write grants, we have corporations to, to make significant gifts sometimes, but really it's, it's small gifts from people who support us over time that keep us going. That and the, the volunteers who give selflessly hour after hour, day after day, 